there's one thing I've observed over my lengthy high school career of one semester here at South Pasadena High School. It's that kids are stressed out. And for the students in here, you don't need me to tell you that. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that you could ask any student in this room if they're stressed out by school, and they will almost unanimously say yes. Now, I'm sure all students and parents in this room have had a conversation similar to this. Hi, honey. What did you learn in school today? Nothing. Well, you had to have learned something. Nope. Nothing. There's this stereotype of the disinterested student that never absorbs the information taught to them in school that I think everyone in this room has embodied at one point or another. I sure did. To me, school felt like something I had to attend, but never really wanted to. Well, at the intellectually ripe age of six years old, I was hit by quite a shocking realization. Our education sucks. Since birth, my generation has been conditioned to believe that there is a direct correlation between someone's academic performance and their value as a human being. One of my peers, who for the purposes of this discussion I will call Philip, did really poorly on a big math test. Overnight, their grade went from an 89% to a 68%, as can be seen with this extremely beautiful and totally necessary graph. It is also important to note that he had a science test, a presentation to give in English, and a Spanish project. Failing to take this into account, as well as the fact that it was only the beginning of the semester, his parents scheduled a meeting with his teacher, got him not one, but two tutors, and grounded him from going out until he could get his grade back up to at least a B. Now, if that doesn't get the Oscar for most excessive parenting ever, I don't know what does. Somewhere along the way, it appears we lost an understanding of what school is supposed to do. And we instead decided that it was okay to partake in some sort of twisted worldwide game of monopoly over our children's learning experience. Gone are the days where those in charge set their sights on making sure we, the students and creators of the future, are educated to know what to do with ourselves when the time comes to be productive members of society. Unfortunately, this problem has gone full circle to the degree where it actually hinders our ability to be productive. Take South Korea, for example, where the leading cause of death for 15 to 24 year olds is suicide over the pressures of school and work. One student said the following after their fourth student suicide at their school that week. Day after day, we are cornered into an unrelenting competition that smothers and suffocates us. We couldn't even spare 30 minutes for our troubled classmates because of all our homework. We no longer have the ability to laugh freely. Hong Kong is facing this dilemma as well. They recently announced new emergency school procedures after 22 students committed suicide just in this school year alone. In the US as well, the American Psychological Association found that the age group of 18 to 33 year olds suffers the greatest amount of stress. And if that's still not enough for you, 75% of students fear poor academic performance, 51% of students are afraid to ask for help from a parent or teacher, and 66% of all students fear the future. If we're to think of education like an apple grove, this problem is not just a few bad apples, it's not just a few bad trees, it's not even a bad season. This is the whole orchard that's bad. Additionally, you can't walk three steps in my school without hearing someone say the C word. College. Every step of my high school career seems to be crescendoing up to my college applications where the last 18 years of blood, sweat, and sugar-free Red Bull will be accepted or denied. Jeez, and I wonder why we're so stressed out. I remember as far back as my first grade teacher telling us kids that we needed to do all our work because we, didn't, we wouldn't get to go to college and have a future. This environment of fear among us students has made the future look dark and impossible to thrive in. And this nagging idea that a person must succeed in everything, or else they won't succeed in anything, has made us afraid to expect. What makes this even more atrocious is that we are expected to do way too much. Take me, your strapping young social critic. I take an extra elective because I've been told that colleges like students with rigorous course loads. Of course, my packed schedule seems to directly spit in the face of the argument that students are too pressured because, well, I'm doing it to myself. But herein lies the biggest problem. Our stress is not only completely rational, but anticipated and even encouraged. Take that quote from earlier, colleges like students with rigorous course loads. That's not something I made up. That's an actual quote from the Duke University website. Us students are in a wildly competitive dog-eat-dog -dog environment in which everyone is trying to cross this virtually non-existent threshold of superiority. 
For a student who seeks to attend a good college and pursue a career that is both financially and morally fulfilling, a course to gamble with my grades as chips will also hardly be noticed. For example, of US News' top 10 universities, not one of them has an acceptance rate of more than 10%. Also, more importantly, the average unweighted GPA of all of these colleges is 3.92. This is a problem that extends even farther than the best of the best. UCLA, a school right in our backyard, is at fault as well. It appears to us students that our only options are to be the best or to be nothing at all. We strive for perfection, anticipate failure, and express this dissatisfaction regardless of the result. This immense stress has caused us to fear the very thought of what comes after our time at school. And this fear that plagues us every day has made us unable to accept our own individual strengths as what they are strengths. Unfortunately, hardly, one any, hardly anyone even knows that this is a problem, and even fewer know what to do to try to combat it. <sighs> Given all that rather diffuse information, I understand if you feel a little depressed. But now that we're informed, we have to do something with all this knowledge. Personally, I think it should be at the highest priority of everyone here to try to create a less stressful environment for the students around you. Teachers, engage with the students in a way that they feel genuinely interested in learning. A great example of this is my eighth grade history teacher, Mr. Adonto. His classroom was brilliant. He used to go in during lunch and brunch just to hang out and study. He could laugh with us, but like the flip of a switch, he could teach us too. He instilled an idea in each and every one of his students that the best thing you can be is yourself. His class was the perfect medium between these warring ideas of encouraging students to do what they want to do and encouraging students to do what they have to do. If we can inspire teachers to engage with students on a personal level and shatter this Kubrick-esque monolith of perfection, students may actually wake up wanting to go to school. Now, for the parents, try to stop pressuring your kids to be perfect. The notion that you need to push your student really, really hard to succeed is actually detrimental on two fronts. One, if your student fails to live up to these impossible standards, they feel inadequate. Two, if you've ever heard the phrase, strict parents create sneaky children, it's the same principle when we substitute strict and sneaky for pressuring and rebellious. As for the students, try not to focus on the mounting pressure of everything I've said before, as hard as that may be. Do what you want to do, provided it's not about underage drinking or partying or all that stuff, it's fun. Don't do that. Among us students, it's an understatement to say there's competition. There's millions of kids all trying to fit into this one little predetermined standard for perfection is. Students should be told that it's okay to be a poet or a firefighter or a woodworker or a musician or a doctor or a librarian or none of it at all. Students should try their hardest, but we should be taught to understand that we don't have to be everything at once. And for that matter, we don't have to be any of it at all. However, the most important part is that there needs to be a complete reevaluation of what school is supposed to do. What should it achieve? Should it harbor a love and genuine interest in learning, or should it deter millions of people from it for the rest of their lives? We need to break the stigma of normalcy and understand that students need to be taught to pursue what makes them happy, not what formulates the illusion of superiority. It is our duty to let the youth of our world feel okay to expect the future and accept it for what it is, not live in fear of it. Hopefully, now that we're all a little bit more aware of the problems with education, we can make the future of it go from looking like this to like this. Thank you.